going on fam? So this video is all about nutrient timing. All right, I wanna preface this video by saying that calories and macronutrients are much more important factors in your overall results than nutrient timing is, but nutrient timing is still a super important factor and a really good tool in reaching the results that you're going for. Before I dive into nutrient timing, I'm gonna reference the Pyramid of Importance by Dr. Eric Helms. And the Pyramid of Importance goes like this. It's got calories at the base of the pyramid, it's got macronutrients, and it's got micronutrients, then nutrient timing, then supplementation. Okay, so if you don't have your calories and macros dialed in, absolutely, then everything else is basically just, you know, you, you need to get those things dialed in before you start worrying about supplements, nutrient timing, micronutrients even. So make sure you have your calories and macros on point before you worry about any of this stuff. Assuming you have your calories and macros where they need to be to reach your goals, then let's talk about why nutrient timing is super important as well. So nutrient timing is gonna be really important to give you the right fuel and energy throughout the day, uh, to recover optimally, to give you the right fuel and energy for your performance and training, and also just overall adherence to your meal plan. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to optimize all those things and stick around to the end because at the very end of the video is where I'll really go into protein and protein protocols. So go ahead and stick around to the very end. And if you don't have your calories and macros under control, then watch some of my old content because I've definitely posted content about calories and macros. First, I'm gonna talk about intermittent fasting. Everyone's talking about intermittent fasting right now. You know, is, is fasting good? Is fasting bad? Is fasting gonna make you lose all your muscles? Um, so for me personally, I, I intermittent fast almost every single day. All right, I, I eat in an eight hour window from about noon to 8 p.m. and I fast for about 16 hours a day. Here are the reasons why I love fasting and why I think it works for me. So number one, I've got a huge appetite. So if you're someone that has a big appetite, then it's gonna really help you to feel full from your meals if you're just eating within an eight hour window and you really adjust to that fasting period. Number two is what I've found is it's super easy to stay focused and productive within your fasting period. Okay, so you don't have to worry about carbs slowing you down, making you feel foggy. So when you're in that fasting period, not only is it super easy to focus, but also caffeine hits you harder when you're fasted. So that's another reason why I love intermittent fasting. Number three, and this is honestly why intermittent fasting works overall for, for people that are trying to lose weight, is it's just gonna allow you to, to eat less throughout the day. You know, when you're restricting your eating window to a, to a much shorter period of time, it's much more likely that you're just gonna eat less calories throughout the day. But make sure to keep this in mind, if you train fasted, your performance will take a hit. So if you're doing intermittent fasting, make sure you use the right nutrient timing protocols to not affect your performance in the gym. So that leads us into the nutrient timing tip that I believe is the most important factor and that's timing your nutrients around your workout. All right, so the most important things that you need to take into consideration with nutrient timing is making sure you have a really good pre-workout meal that's gonna give you the right fuel for that workout, making sure you have a really good post-workout meal to make sure you recover optimally after that workout. The best rules of thumb are trying to get a really high complex carb meal before that workout about one to two hours beforehand. And you wanna have some protein and you want it to be low fat. You want that post-workout meal to be your biggest meal, high in protein. This is the only time you wanna have simple carbs really during the day, because that's gonna allow you to restore your glycogen stores that have been depleted during that workout. Okay, so you wanna have a big meal that's high in protein. You wanna have some simple carbs in that meal, and this is gonna help you recover optimally after that workout. All right, now let's talk about the best protein protocols. How much do you need? When do you wanna eat it? You know, can you absorb all of this? So let's go into all that right now. Here's the thing, if you're not working out at all, you don't need that much protein, okay? So for untrained adults who don't do any sort of exercise, you only need about 0.4 grams per pound of body weight of protein. That's really all you need if you don't work out at all. For training adults, it's much different, okay? So if you're working out, you wanna get somewhere between 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight of protein to recover optimally and make sure you have the right structure and you're not just breaking down your muscles and not recovering. This is also gonna help you with your overall body composition. Okay, the calories and macros is what's gonna allow you to, to lose or gain weight, 
but macros is really what comes into play when it comes to your overall body composition, your body fat versus your muscle mass. And getting enough protein to make sure you hold onto that muscle mass or gain muscle mass while you lose pure body fat, that's going to be the biggest factor in this. All right, so a lot of people think that you can't absorb a lot of protein all at once. And this is a complete myth. You can actually absorb all of the protein. At. As much protein as you can eat, you're going to be able to absorb that. Okay, but the optimal protein synthesis, the ability for you to use that protein to recover from your workouts and to build muscle is between 35 to 70 grams of protein per meal. That's the best rule of thumb for eating the amount of protein per meal for optimal protein synthesis. That being said, the amount of protein that you eat per meal is much less important than the overall amount of protein you're eating throughout the day. But if you wanna optimize your protein synthesis, then three to five meals is the best rule of thumb for optimal digestion and protein synthesis. And for everything we've talked about with nutrient timing so far, eating every two to five hours once you break your fast is optimal for recovery, fuel, and energy throughout the day. Another factor I wanted to bring up is I know a lot of people are going to be forced to have to train fasted. A lot of people, their only time that they can work out is early in the morning. Okay, so th if this is you, then make sure you still get that really high protein big meal after you work out and you're still going to do a lot for your nutrient timing. Okay, but if you're eating, like I said, the right amount of calories and macros throughout the day, then that's a much bigger factor anyway. I hope you found value in that and I hope you can use this to optimize your nutrient timing. Okay, so. If you did find value in that, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe if you want more tips and tricks on how to optimize your training and your results, okay? And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.